Back in the muscle car era, every high performance small block Chevy had one thing in common. They all had solid lifter camshafts. The Fuley motor, the 365 horse 327, the DZ302, and the LT1. Every one of them, solid lifter camshafts. Today, we're going to take a look at the L79, the L46, and the L82. High performance small blocks with hydraulic lifter cams. What the L is going on? Think of these combos as the other high performance small blocks. Looking back at the muscle car era, we all remember the super high performance small block Chevys. You know, all the solid lifter stuff. The reality is that GM built a lot more hydraulic lifter motors than they did solid lifter motors. Today we're going to take a look at three important high performance small block Chevys with hydraulic lifter cams. We're talking about the L79, the 350 horse 327, the L46, 350 horse 350, and as we enter the smog era, the L82, 250 horse 350. We'll find out how they all compare to each other. More importantly, how they compare to their solid lifter counterparts. Let's check out the results. The first of our three muscle car motors with hydraulic flat tappet camshafts is probably the most well known and maybe the one that was feared most out on the street. An L79 360 or 350 horse 327 was really the hot setup in a Chevy 2 or early Nova and out on the street and at the drag strip this was a uh, serious combination. Also this particular camshaft, this hydraulic flat tappet L79 camshaft was one of Chevy's best selling over the counter camshafts for a long time. This was a good piece and it worked very well. Now this L79 327 was basically the L76, basically the 365 horse 327 with a cam swap. It featured the same big valve Fuley heads, it had 11 to 1 compression, it had an aluminum uh, four barrel high rise intake manifold. The other thing that was different on the L79 compared to the L76 or some of the other muscle car small blocks was that this 350 horse 327 actually used a slightly smaller Holley carburetor. According to my research it was about a 600 CFM uh, Holley four barrel carburetor while the other guys used the, the 780 vacuum secondary yield on most of the performance motors. But as we see this was a serious piece. Now when I ran this motor on the engine dyno we, I actually ran the same Holley 750 that we ran on everything else. So maybe this thing benefited from a slightly larger carburetor. We also ran it with the long tube headers the same as we ran all the other muscle car motors. But this 350 horse 327 is an impressive piece and ask anybody that has a Chevy 2 or an early Nova that this motor came in. It performed really well. What I like about this combination is it was you know a lot of the solid flat tap and stuff that was real popular was only used in limited applications. The 365 horse 327 was only used in the Corvette. The DZ302 was only used in the Z28. And the LT1, uh, the 370 horse 350 with the, that solid flat tap of cam was used in the Camaro and the Corvette. But I like this 350 horse 327 and it worked very well. So run on the engine dyno with long tube headers and that 750 Holley carburetor, our L79 350 horse 327 made 346 horsepower and 383 foot pounds of torque. So as you can see, it was very torquey. And there's an interesting comparison. So if we compare this 350 horse 327 to the solid flat tap it cammed L76 365 horse 327, we see this. So we see that the solid lifter camshaft obviously uh, could rev out farther. You know, it wanted to keep going. Now we did have different springs on both of these motors, so maybe that helped with the solid flat tappet cam with the RPM potential of it. But it's interesting to note that that 3030 cam, take a look at the loss and power down low. And I'll go ahead and put the cam specs up for both of these cams both the 350 horse 327 and the 365 horse 327 that used the 3030 cam. But obviously the smaller hydraulic flat tappet cam was responsible for making a lot more power down low. And maybe the race would be over before the, <laughs> before the 365 horse 327 really came on and could rev out. You guys can decide that. Let me know if you guys have any experience with either one of these. Um, let me know how they did when you guys were drag racing them. But 
in either case, both of them made within, you know, like the the 350 horse 327, the L79, made basically with an 8 or 10 horsepower of the solid flat tap of cam and made more low speed power. So let me know what one you think might be a better combination. But let's take a look at our 350 horse 350. The second of our hydraulic cammed uh, performance small box was something I didn't know quite as much about when I first started this. I was pretty familiar with the L79 350 horse 327, but this is an L46, probably lesser known, 350 horse 350. So like the 327, uh, this 350 was kind of an outgrowth of the solid flat tap at camshaft, although there was a difference between this 350 and e any of the previous uh, solid flat tap at cam motors or even the L79 350 horse 327. This 350 horse 350 received a slightly different camshaft than the 350 horse 327. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here so you can take a look at that. But in addition to a minor camshaft change, now this 350 had the fuely heads, it had the 11 to 1 compression, a slightly different camshaft, but it also had a different induction system. Unlike the others that had an aluminum high rise and a Holly carburetor, this one was actually designed to accept a quadrajet, so it was a quadrajet induction system. Now this particular combination, this replica that I built, had the um, factory casting numbers on the quadrajet intake, intake, and we used a quadrajet man or intake or a carburetor, and it worked very well. In fact, if you compare this induction system to the 350 horse 327, this Q-jet that they used on the 350 horse 350 actually outflowed the small carburetor used on that 350 horse 327. So run with long tube headers and an optimized tune. Our 350 horse 350 produced 350.8 horsepower, so, so it was probably pretty uh, accurately rated, and produced good torque, 393 foot-pounds of torque. So let's overlay this versus our 350 horse 327, and not surprisingly, uh, 350 horse 350, more displacement, kind of makes more power everywhere. So a combination of the revised cam timing and the induction system, the 350 horse made more power everywhere, basically. But let's take a look at a comparison between the 350 horse 350 and the LT1 370 horse 350. As you can see, the solid flat tap at cam 350, 370 horse 350 made more power out the top, but not by a lot. Definitely made less power down low than the hydraulic cam version because it was a milder camshaft. So this 350 horse 350 would be a good combination, especially for the street. And, you know, it did very well out there. Made more power than the 350 horse 327, kind of equal power to the LT1. And so good combination. Now let's take a look at the last of our 350s as we start getting into the smog era, the L82 350. The final small block in our trio was the L82. Well, it's not quite as revered as the earlier high compression muscle car small blocks. It actually outlasted both of the other two. It was it had a longer production run than either, either of the other two, so it was used for a long time. And the power output actually varied through the years and at a high of 250 horsepower. Um, power output would get down even quite a bit farther than that, but it did work well. And remember that this 250 horsepower was a net rating as compared to the 350 horsepower gross ratings of the L79-327 and the L46-350. Now, the L82 shared the camshaft with the L46 350 horse 350, but otherwise was fairly different. It had lower compression, meaning it had a different piston and a different cylinder head. It had a large chamber head on it and more of a flat top style piston. So the compression was down to 9 to 1. And the induction system, it actually used a low rise quadrajet intake manifold. And although they did have an aluminum version, an aluminum offering, um, the early 250 horse L82 that we made would have actually come with a cast iron quadrajet intake, and that's what we ran. And we ran the same quadrajet that we ran on the L46 uh, 350 horse 350. So run with the 882 casting cylinder head, a large chamber. This 9 to 1 uh, with the L, L46 uh, camshaft, the, our L82 are rated at 250 horsepower by GM, actually did fairly well. 
it made 313 horsepower and 355 foot-pounds of torque. So if we compare this L82, which would be the hot performance motor during the, <laughs> during the smog era, if we compare that to our 350 horse 350, you see it basically made less power kind of everywhere, even though it had the same camshaft. It had quite a bit less compression. It had two points less compression. It had a different induction system. So, and, and obviously the fuel heads probably were flowed a little better than these later 882 heads. And here is the other uh, 350 horse 327, much closer in power to the 350 horse 350. So these are, this is our trio of hydraulic flat tappet cam, 350 or 350 horse 327, 350 horse 350, and the 250 horse L82 350. Good combinations. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay guys, what did you think about our comparison of the L79, the L46, and the L82, all the hydraulic cammed, high performance muscle car small blocks? Before we get to that, here's an important point, and I want you guys to let me know in the comments. Here's one of the problems we had when doing all of this testing of the legendary small blocks, and especially with the solid flat tappet cam motors. Now we had a problem with the pinch nuts holding the rocker arms down backing out. In the end, with the solid flat tappet cams, we put in poly locks from roller rockers so that we could cinch them down and tighten them and make sure that the rocker stayed in place. Otherwise, the nuts kept backing off and we kept having to adjust the valves. Now, we didn't have that problem on the hydraulic cam motors. So let me know, did you guys ever run across this with the solid flat tappet cams? Did you ever run across it with the hydraulic flat tappet cams? Now, I had a 70 and a half split bumper Rally Sport Camaro, my very first car. It had a hydraulic cam small block 350 in it, and I never ran into that problem. So let me know if you guys have ever experienced that. But what did you guys think about this comparison between all these hydraulic cammed muscle car small blocks? Personally, I think they're awesome. But let me know what you think. Would you like the extra low speed power, drivability, and almost equal power to the hydraulic solid flat tappet cam motors? Or do you like the high RPM potential of these solid flat tappet cams? Let me know which one you choose. Here's what I know. A lot of guys won a lot of races, especially in the L79. That 350 horse 327 and a little Chevy 2 or an early Nova, those guys cleaned house out on the street. The 350 horse 350, also a good motor, and the L82 as we entered the smog area, not too bad. Pretty good performance. I'm Richard Holden, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell. I'll keep testing. We'll keep it going.